Oh, here we are again now and it's like no time has passed Gazing out upon the sunset as it sinks into the night Many times it seemed as though a given day might be our last Face to face with certain death, it's somehow coming out alright I don't think that we have any cause to lament But there's quite a lot of thrilling intent Thrilling intent Thrilling intent, thrilling intent. Leaving your nearly trance-like state, you wander through the gathering gloom. The hill arcs upwards in front of you. You approach the great yawning abyss of the volcano in front. The vegetation begins to grow thick, choking. Astra leads you with one assured step after the other. You follow behind, your eyes glazed over. However, you suddenly snap to when she stops dead. She holds out a pallid arm. Okay, up ahead's where we were camping. It attacked us there. We should probably sneak up, take it nice and easy, and see if anything remains. And where would your people have gone? We didn't run into them along the way, so... It's true. And that's worrying uh, in itself. Uh, I, I, uh, snapping out of the stupor, I like turn around and look at the dirt. Did we leave any tracks? Uh, no, you did not. Okay. However, all around the ground is beaten down. Yeah, I, I kneel down and kind of look at the beaten down grass. Taking a look at it, you do notice that there are footprints, roughly of your size or Astra size. Uh, scattered through the grass. However, there are also gigantic footfalls. Despite her apparent grace, I guess is the correct term, Astra doesn't seem to have noticed this fact. Astra, stop. Hmm? What? Look. I point to the ground. <laughs> she kind of looks down at the ground. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So this looks like where it approached from when it attacked. It yeah, and it drove them further into the island, I believe? Yeah, taking a closer look, Gregor, you notice that the footfalls are numerous. Like, a few thoughts run through your head simultaneously. This is either a multi-legged creature, but even then the foot pattern wouldn't quite make sense, or there are many of whatever this creature is. None double back over and head back down the mountain. It appears as if there was a large stampede or rush through this area by whatever this large mass of creatures was okay i've never seen this monster before which in and of itself is worrying because i've seen all yeah, sort of that's... monsters <laughs> you're basically an encyclopedia i'm basically an encyclopedia of terrible things <laughs> <laughs> i look a little sad <laughs> Over that. No, Gregor, you're. Astronauts you're great. approvingly. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Actually, when she drew the monster, did it seem like it had multiple legs? Yes, indeed, it did have multiple <laughs> legs, but maybe not the ratio that you're expecting <laughs> okay. here. Huh. This thing has been following you without cease. Th these tracks make me think that there could be more than one. Wh does it ever what? seem like like it's impossible that it could move around so quickly or find you so fast? Hmm. More than one. That would make a lot of sense. But at the same time, she kind of like touches one of the larger footprints. These are too big to match with it. I'm I'm really worried. Wait, these footprints are too big to match with the thing that's been chasing you? This these don't appear to be the track marks of the harrow. Oh, more monsters to fight. Wait, okay, and Gregor, do you recognize these tracks? Well, it's pretty hard to tell because this isn't, like, some nice wet cement that they've been <laughs> walking in. It's just this grass, but they mm -hmm. don't look very familiar. I think I'll need more information. Okay, what do you think the odds are of two uh, mystery monsters? I pick up a blade of grass and eat it. Um, I'd say 75%. Uh, okay, how did it... I pick up a blade of grass and go to eat it as well? Ooh, not that one. Uh, you know, I'll just leave that to you. <laughs> I'll teach you sometime. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Anyway, let's get moving. Uh, Astra. Yeah? Do you know 
what what can you tell us about this this not this second new creature, but about the thing that's been chasing you? Can it hear very well? Hear? Uh, I'd assume so. I really think so. It's hard to tell if something's good at hearing or not just by looking at it. I suppose. I mean, or just... smelling, or <laughs> well, but I mean, it's hunting you. Have you not like gauged its ability to track prey? It's good at that. <laughs> <laughs> is all okay. she offers. That's um, bad. I suggest we keep our voices down and our footsteps quiet. Well, we want to also attract it. Do we? I thought we want to find her, her people. If it's at us, it's not at them. But if there's more than one... That's one less on them. We gotta kill this thing. Like, we uh, gotta kill yeah. it. Let's just bring it here already. Get it done. It's, it's bad, but I'd like to engage it in a situation that's advantageous to us. Every situation is advantageous to us. Look at this. See, we got some nice, some nice uh, spiky, spiky wood here to put our backs against. We got probably an ally right there. There's a big tarp we can use to wrap it up. Wait, what, an ally? I step around the corner. Is that... I glance over at Astra. Hey, you notice in hey. the cart somebody's slumped against one of the sides. Oh, they're slumped. <laughs> oh, oh shit. they're super slumped. I, uh, I very quickly rush over, scramble through the cart, and... Assuming that they have similar human biologies, I reach to check their pulse? Uh, their lower half's missing. Oh. Oh, gods! Oh. Uh, oh. I, I, uh... Hmm? What's up? What'd you find over there? No, it's, uh, Greg, you occupy Astra. It looks like it's a corpse of someone from your group. You sort of expect her to, like, react with shock or horror. She just kind of blinks once or twice. Hmm. I, uh, <laughs> and... I, I reach out and shut... Shut their eyes. <laughs> and in that moment, you feel a sudden shaking from the tent immediately next to you. Oh, fuck. Something begins to stir within the tent. You hear things being tipped over, metal impacting the ground, clanging together. Is that tent the size I... of a harrow, Astra? No, I don't think so. I... I'm reaching for my blade already. Astra kind of grabs Gregor and, like, pulls him in this direction so you could at least see whatever's coming out of the tent. But first, uh, a strange undulating creature emerges. <laughs> it doesn't appear particularly terrifying at first until it shifts its full weight, drawing up to an incredible height. The beast slowly <gasps> turns... Uh, Bone-like face appraising both you and Astra. <laughs> Do I probably see it over the tent, right? Yeah, you see it suddenly dwarf the tent. I go pale. Gregor, I've been told you're an encyclopedia <laughs> of the terrible. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that is a bony sickle beast. A, bo a bony sickle beast. Would you say it's likely the creature that killed my kinsman? It's very likely. He's bisected. I would appreciate it greatly if you could kill that thing. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm also an encyclopedia of violence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look down and just sad again. <laughs> <laughs> the creature just stands there like head sort of lulling to the side, occasionally twitching. Um, while it appears to have noticed you, it doesn't quite know what to do yet. However, its head sort of twitches to the side and focuses on Astra for a split second. Suddenly, its great mouth unhinges, letting out a bestial roar. It's okay. You don't have to worry about it. It's not a frogular sickle beast. <laughs> they have forearms. I'm not worried about it. But please, destroy that thing. Absolutely. I pick up my glaive and rush forward keeping my eyes on its sickle arms. The creature swings its arms low, ready to meet Glaive with its own Glaive-like arms. Not even close. <laughs> However, no. Gregor is far, far too quick for it. He darts forward under its arms and strikes upwards. Knowing that its arms are very bony and strong because of the huge bones and muscles, Gregor strikes upwards from under the creature's legs, attempting to slice off, trying to slice through its tiny stumpy calves. You strike the beast and it lets out an incredible howl. Ash, over the din, you managed to actually hear Astra pretty much perfectly. Ash, 
Please counterattack from the opposite side. I believe it's distracted. I was going to, I say, <laughs> running towards uh, the back of the creature. Seeing as the creature's attention is focused primarily on Gregor, uh, I sprint towards it, attempting to drive my blade through its... Attempting to drive my blade through its back. You manage to wedge your blade into the creature. It lets out another cacophonous howl. <sighs> both of its arms, still free, spin, cutting through both the tent and you. Uh, seeing the counterattack coming, in an uh, adrenaline-fueled moment, I leap back, roll on the ground, uh, and glare upwards at the creature. Having faced frogular sickle beasts before, Gregor takes advantage <laughs> of the fact that its sickle-like bony protrusions have their blades facing outward, meaning he can enter the eye of the storm. <laughs> Gregor squidges up close to the gross creature's body. Uh. <laughs> when the spinning stops, Gregor is in the perfect position to drag his glaive across the length of the creature's torso. Using its momentum, you have the creature eviscerate itself. Uh. It's actually rather disgusting. It pitches to the side, slamming through the tent. Gregor spits out some of its blood. <laughs> oh. I give a thumbs Gross. up to Astra, just dripping red. <laughs> no. Is it... Is it dead? No, I believe it's about to charge you in about half a second, Ash. What? What? I say, too distracted to counter counteract. And just as predicted, it does so. Suddenly through the tent comes a great roar. The creature dragging a clattering of pots, pans, and weaponry behind it. A gigantic canvas force slams into the side of you, Ash. <laughs> and carries you backwards. You don't sustain very much damage considering that this creature is padded, however you are pinned at the moment. Stuck to its front, you may now react. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to slip through its tented legs and grab my blade out of its back. You slide through its legs, sending it careening towards what appears to be a wagon of some sort of stone material? Uh, your brain can't quite process that at this point. It's dirt. How you swing through its legs, catching onto some loose hanging fabric. Uh, using that as a fulcrum, you spin around and pull free your sword, what was acting as a functional tent stake for the creature. The, uh, <laughs> all the cloth whips and whirls around, thrown free by the force. It now hangs in the air, fluttering in the breeze over the creature as it slams into the cart, upending it. <laughs> Alright, Marcus, now torch it! <laughs> Situation. <Wait a> shit. <laughs> Situational awareness, Ash. Sorry, it was just, it's just so perfect. Ash, grab one side of that tarp. Okay. I sprint to the right of the creature to grab one side of the tarp. Gregor flips his glaive downwards, stabs it into the ground, then flips it up again. Gregor sticks the butt end into the earth so it stands up on its own, like a glaive tree, blade in the air. <laughs> He runs over and grabs the other side of the tarp. All right, Ash, get it on it and pull it back. All right, pulling! Yeah. With all his might, Gregor heaves on the tarp, pulling the monster back towards the glaive. With a final giant pull, he throws the monster to the ground, impaling it on the glaive. With that last tug, the tarp slips from my hands and I fall flat on my face. <laughs> <laughs> it was still pretty cool, though. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. God, this thing is so disgusting. It still writhes and twitches a little bit, contained within the tarp. That seems like a good time for me to pull out my glaive and just stab, stab, stab. Oh yeah, excellent enough. You've got it in a very compromising position. Astra walks up to the vague location where its head is, makes a sort of like a claw with her hand, reaches out, and slowly with finger pressure begins to crush inwards. You hear snapping what? sounds. Uh, I look between Astra and Gregor. Huh, maybe you could beat us up. Excellent, and there's a layer of canvas between me and it so I don't have to get dirty. She says, pulling her hand back, sort of flicking some goo off. <laughs> yeah, Gregor I'm takes like... a step back and fluffles like a dog, sending showers of blood off of him. <laughs> I stand there, get splattered by the goo, and resume squeegeeing the goo off. Oh, sorry, Ash. <laughs> There was blood in my eyes, I couldn't see you there. It's fine, <laughs> it's fine. 
Why are all the monsters we fight so gross? <laughs> Many things are filled with blood. You learn that after a while. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an observation I've made on my travels, but when anything gets larger than regular sized people, it tends to be disgusting or off putting. Part of the mind can't exactly handle something being bigger than normal. She kind of taps the side of her head. Oh, I don't care about size. Like, I know some pretty big dudes. Like, there's this horrifying guy. He's fine. But, like, I'm talking about all the goo. He's filled with goo, too. Just human goo. Well, no, I know he's filled with goo, but he doesn't, like, he's not, like, gooey on the outside. You got me there. <laughs> anyway, Astra, mm. I, you seemed to be pretty in control back there. Thank you. <laughs> Are you... How did you know what it would do? I don't want to sound rude, but how couldn't you? It's simple enough, right? Monster that mad, depends. monster run, monster slash. Well, I mean, I have my own sense of instinct, of course, but it's generally a more adrenaline-fueled thing. You hmm. seem to have a... It's like you knew exactly what it would do before it would do it. Like, it, this, wasn't, this wasn't instinct, it was just matter of fact. Do you have experience fighting monsters? No. Can you see the future? <laughs> no. <laughs> I uh, maybe she's just you like, smart. Can you read minds? <laughs> All right. Can you? <laughs> she kind of looks at Ash. In no. what way? I've okay. I I'm gonna come clean. I've been told in the past that it's a bad habit of mine to think that things work a certain way with utter sincerity, without necessarily considering context. Perhaps it was an adrenaline-fueled instinct of my own, but I fell into a similar old habit. It's something so, that I'm frankly trying to work on. So your secret is confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I... that Works was literally pretty good. something that never would have occurred to me. <laughs> you are confident enough to crush its head. Oh, that's entirely different. That's just grip strength. She says yeah, opening and closing her palm. I open and close my own palm and frown. I do too. <laughs> I'm really curious about you now, Astra, like more so than before. What's your workout routine? Let's walk and talk. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's walk and talk, please. Okay. Um, I'm not very good at tracking. Uh, I will say that with utter confidence, but I can pick a direction and walk in it if you guys want. Um, look, I'm going I, to look I, for tracks. I think right now it would be best to remain uh, aware for Gregor and I. Your your walks are nice, but they don't exactly leave us in the best state of mind. It's true. Simultaneously, I have left things to you guys up to this point. But if things get increasingly dire, I will take charge again. Okay. So please, by all means, get back to tracking. Ye yeah, whatever you say. You notice that her attitudes shifted at least slightly between before and seeing one of her fellows dead. Yeah. Um, while it isn't plain on the surface, <laughs> it's clear enough that she has a more severe attitude at the moment. I can appreciate it. As we start tracking again, I kind of pull Gregor aside. Astra's scary. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, she just kind of took charge of the situation. See, I can respect that. I mean, I can too, but wow. You know, I'm feeling anyway. more confident about this. Through your synthesized efforts, both Ash and Gregor are able to determine the path where more humanoid tracks are traveling rather than more gigantoid gross tracks. Worryingly, yeah. you find a set of tracks that don't match either of these creatures. Hmm. Do, do I recognize these tracks? You do not at all. Today is full of mysteries. <sighs> That's life, isn't it? Not usually. I am oh. an encyclopedia, you know. And this is kind of bad things all around. I'll just add uh -oh. more to the book pages. Ooh, there we go. Getting kind of full. She, d she turns around now holding a sack of whatever material was on the far side of the camp. What, uh... What is that, by the way? A little it's firepower like... in case we need it. She hands you the sack. You'd get along with Marcus. Fire? Power? You, you seem both deft. You seem both deft and able. 
If you keep track of this, um, make sure not to set off a spark nearby it. It's very dangerous. You'd get along with Kier, okay. too. <laughs> I pull out one of the rocks and kind of smell it. Um, it does smell a little sulfurous. You'd recognize that it, it seems to share the same family of rock with, uh, what Kier likes to jam into literally everything he makes. <laughs> However, a certain, certain part of it strikes your nostrils weird. There appears to be an almost magical quality to it. It's also, hmm. you can sense... Just a little bit. It's probably a little dangerous to jam your face in. Oh no. It smells like Marcus. <laughs> yeah, no, I put like it back. <laughs> sudden spots sudden spots in front of your eyes lead you to believe that this might be mildly hallucinogenic. Okay. Ash? Back in the sack. Your, <laughs> your eyes are really bloodshot right now. No, they just are. Have you been crying? Well, I mean, yeah, most uh no. We're gonna get through whatever it is you're going through. <laughs> Are you scared of Harlock? Oh wait, walk and talk, walk and talk. <laughs> walk and talk, walk and talk. Appreciated. Happy birthday, Elfie, from me and the Shadow Guild. Can you find all of the hidden celebratory ninjas in this video? I hope not, because that means they're not doing their jobs. Hey, I just wanted to take two seconds to shout out some hot references in this video, um, or this arc in general. We've poked at it enough, uh, if you're interested you should go check out Spirit Thief Ashling. it's a nice little, uh, fan-created project, uh, very good, worth your time. Furthermore, uh, if you follow my channel, you'll probably recognize this background map from Fight at the Museum, a module actually designed by a friend of mine. Um, I highly recommend checking that out on my channel or following the original creator. One more final detail. Since this is the fan art fridge, I might as well point out that starting this week, No Smarts But Hearts is getting its own fan art fridge equivalent. So if you have any art you want to send in, please email it to us. 